Namaste. Uh, this is the operation theater at Karthik Netralaya. This is the central uh, lobby of the operation theaters. Uh, there are three entrances. As you can see, that's the uh, male uh, staff entry, and that's the patient entry, and that's the female staff entry. Uh, as you can see here, uh, all the furnitures are made of either uh, the uh, tiles, vitrified tiles or stainless steel. That's the computer. And uh, let us see is one of our staff coming in uh, from the change room. There are two uh, doors. That is a door which opens up to the exterior. He would have changed the dress in this room behind the curtains. And uh, he is fully attired and he walks in. And the moment he comes inside, he has to close the door and uh, he wears the designated uh, uh, foot covers, foot, uh, foot wear, so that uh, he doesn't get, you know, doesn't transmit the dust from outside to inside the operation theater. So once the patient is uh, brought inside here, uh, he uh, or she wipes her feet on the doormat, which has uh, one of the disinfectants applied, and uh, the patients do wear uh, uh, the uh, foot covers and uh, the patient is made to lie down here on this trolley where uh, the painting is done. The drops are put and uh, that's an open painting set which has four cotton balls and an artery forceps with betadine and uh, that is the uh, RL bottle of 540 ml uh, in which we have put 50 ml of betadine and uh, that is used to after painting with the uh, cotton balls uh, after uh, uh, the eye is uh, gently opened up and uh, uh, irrigated in the way uh, my at attender will show. Can you open this left one and uh, pour some fluid onto the there, huh, pour into that. So imagine that is the eye and he's going to pour uh, the fluid onto the eye and uh, the, the plastic uh, rubber like pot uh, is the one which is held temporarily, temporarily like this. So it's held like this when the patient is lying down. So all the fluid uh, uh, drains onto this, this uh, one and which is discarded later. So this is the area where we're going to paint the skin around the eye as well as wash the congenital sac. Uh, and as soon as the, any patient walks in uh, into the operation theater, first thing that he does is uh, he has to use the uh, alcohol rub. That's alcohol rub. The generously copious amount of alcohol rub is applied on patient's head, patient's hands, as well as all the staff who get in will apply the alcohol rub. Then only they are allowed to come inside. Before coming inside, they have to wash their feet in the designated area, which is uh, outside the operation theater. So we will walk in, and uh, once you are going to scrub the area, the scrub area is absolutely clean. We have uh, uh, the, uh, there are no crevices here. The one thing which you need to know is there are no crevices anywhere. As you can see, uh, these are sealed. Many times there is a space between the wall and the uh, wash basin, which uh, becomes moist and then fungus will uh, start growing. The entire area is absolutely dry, as you can see here. That's the place to uh, put towels. And uh, <coughs> all your disinfectants are present on the top of the trolley, which can be easily moved. It's a wheel trolley. It can be easily moved, brushes. And these are the receptacles to put the discarded gloves. Uh, the gloves are put in those uh, bags. And uh, nobody's going to touch it afterwards. Uh, and uh, these are the... Uh, uh, foot operating uh, walls that we have incorporated. These are the commercially available regular walls and they are foot operated. If you move this to a side, water comes on the top and you can close it. So you, both the hands can be engaged to wash your, uh, you know, to scrub. The uh, gauze that you see here is uh, put every day. That's a four, a six inches by six inches, six inches gauze and cotton. And can you open this? This is autoclaved, 
but then in the beginning of the day, we're going to apply it on the uh, spout of the tap. And uh, now at the end of the day, we're going to inspect the inside portion and that should be actually clean without any dirt. If by chance there is any contamination in the water line, uh, though you have fil filtered the water that comes to the operation theater, uh, technically on the rooftop, we even very early, even uh, see after uh, there's some contamination somewhere in the line, this becomes brownish. But of course you can uh, notice it only at the end of the day, but uh, it's a good practice to put it on this spout so that you have the uh, control on what, is, what kind of water is going to come to your place. So the uh, hand washing techniques are uh, stuck there in both the local language, Kannada, as well as in his English. And we'll walk into the uh, sluice room. Sluice room is a, an area where instruments, uh, utensils, the equipment that we use to clean the floor are warped, uh, washed here. So it stores uh, all the soap, whatever that's necessary, disinfectants inside, and uh, the footwear, the uh, whatever cleaning that you need to do is uh, stored here. So instruments, surgical instruments do not come here. It's only to clean the mops, uh, the, uh, like this stuff. They're all placed here. And uh, uh, this is a even this area has to be absolutely clean without any dirt or any grease or any, any contaminants. And it has to be kept dry. We'll walk into the area where we're going to uh, wash the instruments. So the moment surgery is done, the instrument, every, every uh, instrument that is used in the surgery is autoclaved or sterilized by TO. We never reuse, whether it's even phaco tip, uh, phaco sleeves, vitrectomy probes, it can be the cartridges, every, everything will come into this. And what has to be discarded are safely discarded and what needs to be recycled, let's say recycled in a proper way. As you can see here, that's an ultrasound uh, equipment which is uh, uh, ready for use and uh, whenever all the instruments are put into ultrasound cleaner before the staff handles and that's put on for 10 minutes. And uh, that's a wash basin. It's a very clean wash basin. There's no dirt in it and uh, with, the, uh, with the wash. And then we have uh, a register here where every autoclave cycle is uh, timed, as you can see here. 6, 11, 19 is today and he's ready to... Uh, that, that is the, uh, these are the ones which are uh, completed cycles. You can see they are jet bag cycles. And uh, today he's going to put that uh, before he loads onto the uh, equipment, instrument, autoclave. We'll see how he is going to put. That's before sterilization. He folds it inside out and puts in the slit of this cartridge. And then it goes inside a one meter long tube. This end of the tube is now is gets closed and uh, in, in the paper can only be autoclaved provided all the air inside this coil tube is removed and then replaced by steam. If it, this is, uh, if the, there's no suction apparatus, like it's not a B-class autoclave, this test will fail. So this is a very useful uh, PCR test and uh, uh, this we use it for every cycle and the results of it is entered here and put systematically. Every day it's got one entry. And uh, th this is the one we are going to use it for ETO sterilizer. The same concept, the, the, in the end of it there will be a signal tape and that's a tube which has to be, the, the, the ETO has to percolate through the entire tube before it can sensitize the, uh, the uh, uh, signal tape. So we have a double water filter uh, uh, unit here, that is water gets filtered two times, it's designed in such a way and uh, even the, uh, that's autoclave, autoclave has just been loaded and every, uh, every pack, there are no bins here as you can see, every pack will have a signal tape attached on the top of it as well as it will be in the center, in the depth of it so that both of them get, st both of them indicate the status of sterilization. But PCR test as he loads it in the side, in the middle of the pack, put it in the middle of the pack, yeah. 
So that is the ultimate test. If that has been uh, passed, so that he is going to place it in the middle of the pack so that air, the air, air and uh, steam uh, close it. Now steam passes from one end to the other end. Steam is generated in the chamber below. Wait a minute. Steam is generated in the uh, below and then it gets into this by, by the apertures which are there. And uh, it travels from one end of the autoclave to the other end of the autoclave. It percolates the entire pack. So naturally the packs are to be kept in perpendicular to the direction of the steam uh, flow. And uh, this is the uh, aperture that you can see here all around. And then uh, basically what it does is uh, it removes the vacuum. These are vacuum seals. And once you have closed it, uh, there is a motor that is present there. You can see the motor. The motor sucks through this, as you can see the pipes. These are all stainless steel pipes. You can see the stainless steel pipes. These are the pipes which are, uh, which are not fused. These are, these are rods through which we, we, the, the industrialists make hole in it, may bur, uh, drill a hole in it, and uh, these are called seamless. There is no joints here. These are the ones which are recommended for the autoclave because pressure raises. These are seamless stainless steel pipes. And uh, once you close the autoclave, the motor will suck all the air and you, the pressures go on the negative side and the vacuum is created. Once the vacuum is created, even the tubings, like for example, there is a tube, that PCR tube that we have put here, process challenge device, PCD. Ah, that's a PCD dive. And it sucks the air from this aperture. So the entire vacuum, entire tube inside PCD is, is ho the hollow tube. Like imagine this is a FACO tube or this is the tube. The air inside is sucked out. And once the air is sucked out, then later the steam is let in. So as you know, the 100% of the air cannot be sucked out from any area. So it's either 90% or 95% or 85% depending upon the efficiency of the pump. So one suction is not enough. So re repeated tests by an outside agency will tell us that I'll have to do the suction process and steam letting process has to be repeated many times. So in our, in our setup, we have to do it four times. Two times before the, surgery, before the articular process starts and two times after the pressure has gone to the top, top the highest, uh, you know, 121 degrees centigrade, uh, 20 pounds, whatever that's set to the machine. If that has reached, then we engage the vacuum. So entire process is very difficult to remember and practice it every time. There may be human uh, errors. So what we do is we have uh, an instrument here uh, called uh, nano servo sterilization console. So all these are automatic. If you have six cycles, eight cycles, all can be auto set here. The moment you have done it and activated it, it runs the entire machine, all the cycles, the vacuum cycles, the pressurized cycles, duration of each cycle is controlled by nanocontroller. And the temperature is recorded on the, uh, on the dial uh, uh, graph that you see here. So this is a B-class autoclave. This is an Indian made autoclave, but it has given excellent service to us. And, uh, and the service is excellent. You'll have to uh, service the autoclave by professionals periodically so that any errors are uh, taken care of. So we have uh, Melag Autoclave 2, which is, a, uh, which is an excellent quality uh, tabletop autoclave. This is also a B-class autoclave. It's not an S-class. S-class is not recommended in ophthalmology because we, are, we use uh, tubings. Whenever the tubes are used, S-class cannot be utilized. And the, uh, it can take four FACO tricks at one time. So we, any machine, we have uh, two FACO machines or three FACO machines. Each one of them has got four probes and all the probes uh, uh, can be articulated together and we can do one after another four surgeries. So this, t this is not an eight minute cycle or a six minute cycle. It takes full one hour because any B-class autoclave will take one hour to sterilize and uh, the contents of hollow tubes, the packs, for example, have to be controlled. Both of them will have also a dry, uh, dry cycle, where is at the end of the cycle, so the moisture should not be in the pack. So entire steam is take, sucked out by the suction apparatus and thrown out, and filtered air is let inside. So 
the, at the end of the cycle, both Milag as well as the uh, Yamsha autoclave, the instruments remain absolutely dry. And uh, this is the uh, ETO machine that is present. ETO machine has to have a very good exhaust. ETO gas should not be let inside an operation theater because it's highly toxic. So a pipe from the uh, tube goes up and goes up uh, outside and it goes 10 feet above the terrace level. So that is the uh, standards you'll have to keep so that people who are engaged working here are not harmed. Uh, similarly, we have uh, uh, dry, uh, so that the first what you saw is the uh, autoclave zone and uh, before that what you saw is a wet zone. This area remains wet when you are operational and the drainages, uh, the washed, instrument washed area go into the effluent management system that is present which has sodium hypochlorinated chloride in it. On the washing, packing and all is done on the dry area. Here there is no moisture and uh, we have, uh, as you can see here, there are no cupboards, no closed cupboards and all the work is done on the top of the two trolleys that are present here. So like folding uh, the instruments, packing the instruments, uh, surgical instruments, making them into nice packs like what you see there are all done on these two. Uh, areas. So we uh, we have an iron machine, ironing machine, so that they can iron here itself. These are the uh, uh, Tyvek pouches uh, as rolls. This is uh, the machine which seals the Tyvek pouches. Tyvek pouch is one, as you can see here, it has got paper on one side and it has got a plastic paper wrap on the other side. There are signals which are present here. One is for ETO sterilization, other is for autoclave. Uh, the, as you can see here, the paper can, uh, can easily become wet. If it gets wet, after some time it's going to get dried. So imagine this pack has become wet in this corner for some reason and it has got dried. Now you will, you will think that this is a sterile instrument, but once an area has become wet anywhere here by drop of water, by, you know, by, an, uh, by a fluid which is, or a spray for example, uh, so this is considered to be unsterile. There is no way to find out whether it, is, it had become dry yesterday or today and uh, uh, so that's why this storage is very important. Store, it has to be stored in an area which is absolutely dry where there is no chance of uh, the fluid coming out. And again, uh, every one of them will have an expiry date. So, so this is uh, sterilized on 4th of October. So he puts a rubber stamp of 4th of November as an expiry date. And we are not going to use th this, uh, uh, this is an autoclave product. Uh, it has the trypan blue in it. Uh, then it, any, f any material that has got fluid in it cannot be to sterilized. So this is an autoclave pack and uh, we keep as one month for autoclaving as the uh, control uh, period. And uh, this has to be used before that.